Hello lads and ladies, how's it going? It's Rupert from Jam and today we'll be talking about icons. If it's your first time on the channel here to design content dedicated for new and intermediate level designers, jammed in consumable amounts to make the content as easy to understand as possible. Please make sure to stick around till the end of the video and without further ado, let's get some jam. So what are icons? Very simply, icons are graphical representations of a certain function, application or topic that are used within a certain context, for example a website, mobile app, etc. to make it easier for users to navigate. Because generally, it is easier for our brains to process icons in comparison to text, instead of having to read every function to find the one that we're looking for. So what are the tricks to design legible icons? In order to keep icons as legible as possible, always use basic shapes when designing. For basic shapes we have squares, triangles, circles and lines. Combining these shapes together, you can create almost any icon. For combinations, you can use the Pathfinder tool, in which you can unite, subtract, intersect and exclude. I prefer using the Shape Builder tool because it has slightly better control than the Pathfinder tool, and also due to personal preference. Using the Shape Builder tool you need to select all the objects together, then click and drag over the shape you want to create and you can combine it easily. If you want to subtract the shape, simply hold Alt or Option and drag over the places you want to get rid of. Now for the most important part. How do you visually balance icons? Of course, the basic stuff. In order to design icons that look alike, you need to decide on the visual language, make sure the colors match, curves, stroke width, etc. However, that isn't enough. In order to visually balance icons, you need to follow a certain grid. I found this grid on a channel called Friends of Figma Iconography that does tutorials on Figma. Go check them out, link in the description. However, we will be working on Illustrator. Basically, this grid makes sure that the icons look coherent and easy on the eye. If you want to design a wider icon, use this rectangular grid. For taller icons, use the upwards one. For square icons, use the square one. And for circular icons, use the circle one. Now, if you look at the shapes beside each other, they visually appeal together and no shape feels heavier than the other. In comparison, if you decided to use a circle that is 40 pixels wide beside a square that is also 40 pixels wide, the square feels much heavier due to the more surface area covered. I've uploaded this grid inside of a template on my Gumroad for you to download for free if you want to design your own icons. I've sketched my own set of icons on an A4 icon design sheet that is also included in the download. So go get it if you want to design along. Link is in the description. Now that I've finished sketching a set of icons on paper, I'm gonna head on to Illustrator and start applying everything that I've explained. Simplifying the sketches into basic shapes, single stroke width, single color. This is great exercise for all designers out there and it's actually pretty calming too. Deconstructing anything into basic shapes. I have fast forwarded this video in order not to bore the f out of you. If you want the full video uploaded let me know and I'll put it on Gumroad. After you're done designing the icons you can also change them to solid color instead of strokes. And vice versa. This is how you should design icons that really work well together. If you want to make sure of how your icon looks at a certain pixel size, make sure your icons are at the ideal pixel size you want it to be and press Ctrl Alt Y on Windows or Command Option Y on Mac, which turns on pixel preview. This lets you see how your icons really look like on screen once they're rasterized. This way you can judge whether you can adjust it to look better on pixels or leave it as it is. It is important to know the size of the screen you're designing on and the size of the icons on the screen before designing them, because then you won't need to reiterate them as much later on. Also if you want to make your icon design skill better, you need to look and observe a lot of icons, understand why certain things are the way they are, which is how you improve at anything as I've discussed previously in this video how to improve at design. Now that you've made it till the end of the video, let me know down in the comments below. Was this video any helpful? Have you learned anything new about design? If you did, go ahead and please leave a like on this video, share it with your designer buddies. Also, do not forget to subscribe for more design jam content. It pushes me a lot to create more of these videos. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.